Hello and welcome. <clears throat> Sorry for the voice. This is Sister Farah, professed lay Franciscan, and I want to welcome you to a live commentary, which is something different of our regular scheduled program on the 12 Steps of Humility and Pride. Sit tight, I'm going to tell you what this is all about. Hello everyone and welcome. This is our regular scheduled program that usually airs Sunday night. And we have been working on the 12 steps of humility and pride, going chapter by chapter. Tonight is a version where I'm going to basically, because I was sick, go over the previous chapters, do some highlights, and then I'm going to do just the second part of the video is going to be some looking forward, some ideas, and asking for some ideas for those of you that do follow these courses, which I'm really finding enjoyable. So as always, sit tight. Let's pray ourselves in and we're going to get started. In nomine Patri et Filio et Spiritus Sanctus, sic erat in principio et nunc et semper et secula seculorum. Sancti Michael Archangel, defende nos in praelio, contra nequitsim in insidius de oblias do presidium, in perit elideus, supplices de pecamer tuque, princeps meletia celeste satan maliosque, spiritus malignos, qui ad perditionem, animarum pervagantur in mundo divina virtute, in infernum de trude. Amen. Since we're not doing the whole lesson tonight, I did not do the rest of the prayers. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Farah. Farah Rose. This is the Swords of St. Michael Network, which offers you a variety of personal exorcism information videos based on many years of experience and stemming from lots of experience, Catholic faith, devotionals, you will find a variety of information here on your own spiritual warfare needs. So I'm hoping you get something out of tonight's program. Please like, subscribe, and share the video if you can. And if you'd like to support the video, if you really are getting charged and getting something out of this, become a Patreon supporter or there's other ways you can support in the links below. But if you don't click on the bell, you won't get notifications. So please do that. Now, as I said, half of this video is going to be dedicated to bring everybody up to speed on what we've already been working on to get ready for the next Sunday's lesson. And the other part of it is going to be some information on what I'm looking forward to doing in the future. So in the 12 Steps of Humility and Pride, what we have been going over is a very intense series of exercises and I've gotten a lot of feedback that some of this is uh, it's different it's unusual um, a lot of people have never heard of this before and if they have they really haven't they haven't really understood how to kind of jump in and try it well to give you a little bit of information the 12 steps of humility and pride was basically writ or written by St. Bernard for his fellow monks for professed religious and what my inspiration for you has done coming from spiritual warfare excuse my voice it's still froggy from a cold is I want to give the person that's seeking Christ the ability to step into and find a different perspective in order to inspire them to solidify their walk with Christ, to solidify their faith life, to help them um, maintain a forward motion and not feel as if uh, they're not getting enough. What do I mean by that? I mean that Many times when I talk to people that have fallen away from, shall we say, worship service, uh, mass, etc., um, volunteering because, you know, they charge too much, etc., they take up too much of my time, I hear a lot of people tell me that the biggest problem with um, being faithful is that 
we're not getting a lot of straight talk, meaning that our formation skills, our ability to help people understand specific things, they're not exactly getting. And I tell people, you can't look at just one source. You have to look at the myriad of sources. This is, you know, what is so beautiful about the Catholic faith is we have tradition, great tradition, oral tradition, written tradition. We have, as a catechist, you know, I do my best to help people find sources that they can look to, actual sources that, you know, are going to point them in the right direction. This course on the humility and pride, we're really enjoying focusing on um, stepping forward and literally picking up our Bible once or twice a week and inspiring ourselves to look at these passages and stop. What, what did we get from that? What? Because the wonderful, beautiful thing about the Word of God, you can never read it the same way twice. You will always get something new and inspiring from it if you pick it up on a regular basis. I have to interrupt my dialogue, monologue, and say hello to Edgar. Hello, Edgar. Hello, Sean. I hope you guys are doing well. God bless everyone. A happy and blessed New Year to everyone. And as I, as I resume... So when we look at our own faith walk and as we step into difficult exercises such as this one, and as I was saying, a lot of people say, oh, it's so difficult. Well, if we presume something's difficult, we're not going to try it. If we look at a mountain and say, there's no way I'm going to make it up, but we see maybe there's some stairs in the back of the mountain, maybe we can climb up a little bit that way, and then there's no path, but maybe they can follow this. We have to make our own way. We have to search our own way. If it was easy, everyone would be on the road to Damascus. Everybody would be saying, yes, salvation's for me. Yes, I can do this. It's not easy. In some ways, I have to tell you, it is very easy. The older I get, and I think the more frustrated and angry I get at my own stupidity, the easier it is for me to snap and say, wait a second here. Let's thank God for this horror. The horror of horrors happened. And it wasn't as bad as it was meant to be. And as a matter of fact, it was a wonderful lesson. It takes us years to get to this point. Just as in our faith walk, when we are learning, when we go to mass, when we are learning, reading our Bible, when we're attempting to do these exercises, this is not a pass or fail. This is a labor of love. And what do I mean by that? Excuse my cough. <clears throat> still recovering from a head cold, a labor of love in the time that we spend in spiritual exercises devoted to Christ and devoted to our walk with God is a labor of charity from our hearts, our heart's deepest desire to be with God that the angels literally sing and jump up and down and do the happy dance around you because your whole soul lights up with a grace that can be poured in once we open ourselves up to the graces of God. And that's what we get for seeking him. So let's look over what we've done so far. And then I will get to the second half of the program and talk about the look to 2022. Excuse me, I'm going to cough again. <coughs> ah, I'm almost over it. It's been about a week now, so it's about due. And it is a cold Please, no more questions. I don't have COVID. I don't have the COVIDs. Um, it was just a sore throat. And I am drinking my bromulin, my pineapple juice here. Ooh. Because colds, just like most flus, you need lots of fluids, lots of rest, and everything else. Welcome, Sean Marie. Happy New Year, everyone. <coughs> Excuse my cough, please. We're going into the summary now, this 12 steps of where we've only gotten through half of this. And I will tell you that chapter 10 is going to be very labor intensive. So pack a lunch, pack two cups of coffee. So next week when I see you Sunday, it's going to be long. I'm just warning you. So here's the brush up. Now, when we began this journey with St. Bernard into the 12 steps of humility and pride, we started where... We understood that Christ is the goal. <clears throat> Christ is the goal. He is the road. 
And we began in a search for truth where until our souls recognize that he is the way, the truth, and the life, we're kind of floundering around thinking, yeah, there's a God, and yeah, I get good luck. Yep, I can wing it. Hey, God, I need a favor. We don't really settle into, yes, Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life, and there is nothing else. We don't, we don't really focus on that. So as seekers, we are not monks. We are not living a cloistered religious life. We are looking to find this path in our own daily lives. Just one simple step at a time. Thank you so much. I have to comment with people in the chat, please. Thank you, Edgar. It is just, I haven't had it in probably six or seven years. So I'm not complaining. I'm thanking God for the forced vacation, or should I say staycation? So yes, and a lot of people have it so much worse than me, and oh, Lord have mercy on There's so many people with COVID and people really suffering. I am not suffering. I am just a whiny, sick person, okay? So in the first chapter, as we went through it, we started to understand that Jesus calls us to lean on him and he reminds us that his yoke is light that we can do this welcome Lori that's perfectly all right it's so good that you're here Lori is our moderator um, in tonight and I asked Sean too so either one of those can grab questions if you have them and we'll look at them at the end in the second we looked at the ladder of humility and how this is going to help us position ourselves in a way that we can receive the grace, the truth, how we can hold on to that yoke instead of saying, nope, I'm not carrying that cross. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to complain. I'm going to argue. I'm going to whine. And this is not what I want to do. So the ladder of humility. And then in three, we understood that in this walk, in this spiritual warfare, in this self-exorcism, there are three degrees of truth, three solid degrees. This is going to take us a while. It's going to take me a lifetime. Honestly, you guys, it is not going to happen overnight. I got to welcome another person into chat. Welcome, Christian Gaucho. This is an unusual thing for us to do. However, since I took time off and, you know, it was the epiphany, we cannot, we can't do shows on certain holy days next Sunday. But this is going to be a summary. I hope you enjoy it. These three degrees of truth, we are understanding that all truth comes to us gradually so that just as this, if Jesus was teaching us, you know, you cannot give meat to an infant. He must start on milk. Truth is the same way. Truth is a large bite of meat that we can't even choose sometimes. So it has to be revealed in small, tender morsels. So we see in these degrees of truth that mercy is only found in those that ask for the pureness of heart and possess empathy. Mercy. And also, what blew me away when I read that chapter, I've re I, and this is coming over and over again in, in some of the studies that I'm doing for the book I'm working on. Devils cannot empathize. And for those of you that are familiar with the work that I'm doing on narcissism and the shadow demons of narcissism and how, you know, demons literally, you know, get into our lives just like a narcissistic relationship, you understand what I'm talking about when I say that the devils have no empathy. They possess no empathy. So we must, we must practice empathy with each other. In the fourth chapter, as we went on, we look at self-scrutiny being the first degree of truth. And the self-scrutiny that we need to go over is not to over-scrutinize ourselves, not to hold ourselves to such a degree that we can never attain this, but to scrutinize ourselves in a gentle, loving way as if we are saying, 
What is the fruit of this? How, how is this affecting my neighbor? How is this affecting me? How is this affecting my walk? So our self-scrutiny is our first degree of truth. It is where we first get to look through the lens of how others are perceiving us, how we are literally forcing ourselves on others instead of loving others. Now in the second degree, the second degree in chapter five, our eyes begin to accept this truth as we practice mercy towards others. Now this is a very important part of the gradual process of discerning truth and accepting that as we show mercy, let's say that uh, I, I drive like a maniac and I look at other people and I say, oh my gosh, you just cut somebody off the road. My scrupulosity needs to start in the mirror and say, okay, slow down. There's no need to rush. My mercy, my second degree of truth comes in recognizing that yes, my neighbor can drive like, you know, a mad fiend. However, maybe I ought to pray for my neighbor that my neighbor doesn't get in an accident instead of judging my neighbor harshly. That is the mercy of the second degree of truth. The mercy that we give to others. Now, in the third degree of truth, we went further. And we looked at the work of the Trinity, the work of the Holy Trinity, how the Trinity combines to support and uphold us and open our eyes to all these truths and to help us in ways that we can't contemplate. Sometimes we are so stuck in where we're trying to go and what we're trying to do. And especially if we love our faith and we love our prayers, sometimes we're kind of blind to the, our rigorous routine. Instead of practicing expository prayer, instead of asking, you know, you know, just to just to have a prayer moment right there, wherever you are. It doesn't matter. The street corner, in the car, arguing with someone, in the middle of a meeting. It just, it's important that we are open to the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. I got to welcome, welcome Bernard, because of course we're talking about St. Bernard in writing his 12 Steps of Humility and Pride. Welcome. We're going over the synopsis before I talk about the future videos that we're going to be doing. Now, after this third degree, the work of the Holy Trinity, we did the, excuse me, I don't want to cough anymore. <laughs> we worked on clearing our spiritual sight because we see through our own jaded lens of, well, I do this and I do that and I do this and we look and we judge those around us. We judge those people without, without the mercy that we would normally give. So our spiritual sight needs to be tuned up, tuned up to be gentle, to appreciation, to be open. And I think that's sometimes the hardest thing for us to do because we are so rigorous and we're so into being truthful and honest and focused on those things that we have to get done that we don't allow ourselves any wiggle room whatsoever that's not very healthy now further this is one of my favorite chapters so far through this is was chapter eight of the third heaven the third heaven which is spoken of by many saints saint Teresa, saint paul the cross many saints speak of this and people tell me oh I'll never get there I'll never get there there is no way I can't do this I'm not good enough this third heaven I think the more I pray and I discern about this I think this third heaven is going to be for those of you that followed and and that contact me this is going to be surprisingly much easier to discern identify and desire than many of us believe. This third heaven is that secret place. 
And this is where in that chapter we focused on what is the secret for you? What is it? it is, a, is it a rosary in the backyard? Is it 20 minutes to yourself after you first wake up and you've done the Jesus prayer 33 times? What is the secret to you? Is it sitting under, under the stars at night and just repeating the name of Jesus until you calm down and you enter into that secret place and you feel that absolute joy of knowing the Holy Spirit is right with you. This was just eye-opening to me, this, this perfection of the secret. That excited me to no end, in case you couldn't tell. Welcome, George. Good to see you. Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. As we went on from the secret, we went into chapter 9, the ladder to humility through pride. This was mind-blowing for me, too. I love a challenge, and this was really difficult. Because how, how do you get, how, how, how do you look at being humble and you get to pride? What's going on with this? That was mind-blowing. So this is chapter 9. In chapter 9, we looked at, in order, in order to expose where pride literally rips our souls and eats us alive, we look at where we are not humble and where we need to practice humility. This is, this is easy, it's tough, and it's confusing. I was like, Ugh. I had to read it like three or four times and think, did I do this? It was, it was very, very difficult. And I think it was difficult because how, how do we recognize in ourselves? I mean, if we're full of pride and this ladder to get rid of pride is got to be through humility or we're, yeah, we're getting from humility to pride. It's going to expose the pride in us. Where do we start? And I think the most obvious place is to look at what you need to confess. What do I confess at night? What do I say, Jesus, I could have done that differently. Jesus, can you show me? Because a lot of times we have Achilles heels full of things that we regularly do, regularly, every day, that we don't even think of. I've got lots of them. I've got lots of prideful points. It's, it's not easy to look at. But this, this is that ladder. This is that ladder that we're trying to climb, that we're trying to focus on so that we can attain that humility. And there's, there's no way we can do it except as we expose our pride. So in this ladder walk, as we look to practice humility in certain ways, that rips down the walls of pride, the opportunity to sin, and keeps the minor oppressions at bay. I'm telling you what, it works. It works. So, yes, please give it a like and share it and a thumbs up. I had to share because you know what? Little one here, <laughs> she can't leave me alone tonight, and I rarely get to bring her on. So she's just, she's being a little pest. If you hear her or anything, I'm sorry, but she can't leave her mom alone where her mom's not feeling good, and I'm just getting over a cold. So I'm going to change screens so anyone that understands that we are going to continue the steps of humility and pride, the 12 steps, next week, okay? Download your free copy in the link. We are starting the second part. Chapter 10 will be very long. I'm not going to go over it because it is so long. But I look forward to seeing you on our regular time Sunday night. And give us a like, thumbs up, and share. Next up, we're going to talk about future things, future projects that I have in mind. So I want to talk to everyone in chat right now. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I want to 
let you all know that those of you that are subscribed, those of you that show up, um, all of you, I pray for you. And um, I would ask that you pray for this ministry as we continue to do the work um, that God calls us to do in exposing darkness to light, tearing back the vestiges of scales, anything that we can do to help people understand in an easier form of the simple things. <laughs> Thank you, Edgar. The simple things that we can do every day just to keep temptations, sadness, depressions, alienation, feelings of loneliness. This has been a very, very difficult time of year for a lot of people. And it's a difficult time of year for me and uh, a lot of you that I know. I um, just got word that a friend's uh, grandson committed suicide just last week and um, it just if you could say a little prayer for my Aunt Frances I'd really appreciate it because she loves loves her grandbabies and uh, this time of year is real a real easy way to say you know what nothing went right last year nothing's going to change this year and I'm hoping that if you're here and if you're looking at this channel, you're going to see there's lots of opportunities. There's opportunities for you. There's opportunities for me. There's opportunities for all of us to be on the same page. What do I mean by that? None of us are perfect. None of us are 100% happy every single day of the week. And that we all struggle with the same things. We struggle with hopes. We struggle with dreams. We struggle with the little things the big things we struggle with you know are, are my bills gonna get paid do I gotta get a new house do I gotta move am I gonna be sick am I gonna survive we live in a very unique time in history from what I understand and I love history and I've studied all sorts of civilizations and rises and falls and this time in history we are looking at right now we are on the precipice what do i mean by the precipice we are on the edge of major change which way and how soon that major change is i'm not a prophet i don't pretend to be i just hold on to my faith and i'm not saying this to scare you or any of my viewers what i am saying though is that momento mori is a beautiful practice as franciscan we're required to do one day a month to take time to thin our possessions, to thin our lives, thin our minds of those things that we don't need. So we give away things to those we love or we donate things as a way of cleaning our closets. So what do I mean momento mori? Why do I bring that up right now? When everybody might be struggling, might be lonely, might be frightened and may not have a job or I ask each one of you to disconnect five minutes a day one day a week disconnect with the world disconnect with the news disconnect with people calling and say oh my gosh did you hear this oh my gosh did you see bitcoin disconnect the more that you lean on christ his promises the joy of your life, your little space, your little family, your non-family, your furry friends, the more you connect with who you are and what you contribute to, the more peace you're gonna have. And this here at Sword St. Michael is one of those things that we try to focus on. We live in a fallen world. Welcome, George. We're at the second half of the video here now where I'm talking about some of the challenges and some of the things that I'm looking forward to doing here at Swords of St. Michael. So if we're going to disconnect from the world, we have to, A, we must pray. We must devote that article of faith inside of ourselves to some form of prayer each day, whether it's in the morning, at night, three times a day, do the Angelus, do what you need to pray. Without prayer, there is no peace. 
I can tell you from years of praying, years of not praying, there is no peace without prayer. I don't care what somebody says. Oh, yeah, I'm a peaceful person. I never pray. I don't do this. I do my Zen yoga and Zen this. Then something happens and the other shoe falls. However, yes, pride is in all of us. And this is, this is what we want to look at this year. We want to look at how, I, I want to start some series on how we can take our peace that we've given the world. As Jesus says, we enter into a house and if they receive our peace, we can stay. If they don't, we're supposed to wipe the dust off our shoes and get on and out. So let's do that. Welcome, Colin. If we can just look at that little expression of Jesus saying that we take our peace and we share it. And if it's not received, we take it back. What we have to do is we have to reserve the reins we, with the help of the Holy Spirit, control the reins of that peace. We let it go. We pull it back. This is, this is a difficult thing for me to do. Because I give all. I just dump it all. And I forget to save some for myself. And I know a lot of you are like that. And Edgar is, you know shared a very common sentiment and in spiritual warfare I want to tell you this is very important I'm going to paraphrase what he wrote but he said and this is for me too I find it very hard to disconnect as a widow as a single mother I have so much responsibility and no other shoulders I can lean on and sometimes it's not just the office it's the ministry it is the rosaries it is the child it is the dog everybody wants something from me 24 hours a day there is no getting away from it i agree however i'm realizing and, and this christmas really really showed me that if i do not break away and figure out a way to turn off my phone for a few hours. I'm just a spinning top. And what happens with a spinning top? You poke it, it runs one way. Poke it, it goes another way. And that's what the little minions are looking to do to us, all right? This is spiritual warfare here. We don't have to look at them. They're seeing us spinning like crazy and just poking at us. And they poke at us through other people, interruptions, distractions. So we have to slow that top down. Somehow, some way, I'm not one of those believers in you got to do those New Year's Eve resolutions because you know what? I'm going to be the same grumpy, strange person walking towards Christ. But I'm going to try hard to do better. So as I talk about the shows I'm doing, I would like to do something that... Um, focuses on maybe some meditations, some Latin prayers that help us make a commitment um, either once a day, once a week to show us how to disconnect in healthy ways, in ways that uphold our faith, in ways that let our family, our loved ones, and the people that surround us know that this is for them too. This is so that they can have the best of us because I think it's pretty important. Other shows I want to continue are shows on the spectrum of uh, spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is not the same for everyone, depending on age, depending on um, vocational status, the levels of sp spiritual warfare that we can enter into and that we can assist. Also, the legal identification. I get a lot of questions from a number of people, from grandmothers to aunts to uncles, can I pray for this? Can I pray over this? Can I bind this away? So I'd like to do a couple shows on, you know, letting people know where our authority lies. 
other shows I would like to do. Oh, let me say hello to a couple new people in chat. Hello, Rebecca. Welcome. I'm so glad you guys could make it. And, oh, goodness gracious. I am so sorry to hear about your stepmother. I will pray for her. Oh, my gosh. Or stepbrother. Oh, mercy. Requiem Scott and Pache. There is so much of that, George, going on right now. And I'm so sorry to hear that. These, these people need your love. They need your time. And they need whatever you can give them. Because if there is anything that I know from the everything that I do, everything that I give in my ministry, everything that I do every day, your time... And attention is the greatest gift you can give anyone. Thank you so very much. Oh, John, God bless you. You have had so many struggles. God bless you. Thank you so much for the super chat. Right now, welcome, John. We're talking to my future programs. God bless you, Mary. Happy New Year. Yes, we're talking about future programs, John. And we're talking about the struggles that we go through. George, I'll add your sister and your children to my daily morning prayers. This is this is so difficult and so terrible. Oh, your cousin too? Oh my good Lord. So, so many people, so many people lost. I'm so sorry, Colin, that happened. And as we look at your gift of time, especially because... I'm going to tell you from personal experience and the suicides in my family. People don't know how to talk to somebody that's lost somebody. You say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But there's, there's nothing else. I'm going to tell you right now, if you know a family that has lost someone, or if your family member has lost someone due to the loss of life of suicide, bake, cook, call, do something. Just be there. Show up. Just sit and listen. Talk about the person that's gone. This is the hardest thing for people to understand. Everybody's like, oh, well, that person committed suicide. We, we can't talk about them. Oh, don't mention their name. You're going to cause pain. No, the pain is in people avoiding talking about the person that's not there. That's what hurts. That's what kills. Everybody's so afraid to talk about it. No, people need to remember the good things, the beautiful things. We need to remember the contributions of life when they were vibrant, not the event. Sometimes people just need you. Take a half hour and go hold their hand. Say, hey, I just came over to hold your hand. If you don't like my hand, fine. I'll hold your foot. What can I hold? I want you to know. That my presence is here for you. Because that's what Jesus did for us. I've got stuff going in chat. I'm going to read it real quick. So Christian says, um, he's got to watch it on replay. I'm sorry your connection's not stable. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Happy near you. I'm glad you made it in, Christian. And this is... This is something that we struggle with in knowing in societal norms what's okay to talk about, what's not okay to talk about. We must be open to talk or to listen. I saw this beautiful quote today and I screenshotted it. It was so amazing. It just blew my mind. Silence is the cross we bear to defeat our ego. Silence. So just like your presence is a gift, silence is a gift. It's what we don't say and where we are. So on that note, like I said, we're going to start new shows on disconnection. I've got new shows on narcissism coming up new shows on levels of spiritual warfare coming up and I would love your input and your ideas because um, I did have some really interesting questions 
about, um, as I said, about you know legalities of binding and that sort of thing. We're going to continue our spiritual warfare journey. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a Saint Therese or I'm going to do a Saint John, uh, a Saint John of the Cross or Saint Paul of the Cross. I've got a couple different books. I like to keep them short and brief like this one, The 12 Steps of Pride and Humility, so we can get through it, we can tackle it, and we can put it away for later too. So I would love your suggestions. If anyone has any questions or suggestions right now, this is the time for it. I apologize. My throat is so froggy. I'm on the tail end of a really disgusting cold. And I really want to thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't do a Christmas show or New Year's show, but I was kind of under the weather. And as I was speaking earlier, you know, when Edgar and I were talking about time, I needed to take some time to be in the woods and I needed to turn the phone off and just relax and see what was going on. Thank you for your prayers, George. Oh, thank you so much. God have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Yes, Deus Vault. And yes, welcome, Rebecca. We definitely, we definitely have to, um, we have to work every day on the little things that we think no one sees. It doesn't matter. And sometimes we just forget to do that. And that's okay too, because one day at a time. If you can take a little time for yourself, you can take five minutes. I mean, I remember when I was a young mother, if I was in the bathroom for five minutes and no knocks, no fingers under the door, no notes shoved under the door, nobody beating on the door, nobody coming around to beat on the window, I was like, I'm safe. <laughs> and that was a little bit of peace. Now today, it's different. Now, you know, it's the phone, it's the computer, it's the sun, it's everything. So at all points of your life, whether you're a father, you're a mother, no matter what part of your life you're devoting your life to, there will be challenges, there will be interruptions. They're constant, aren't they? Thank you so much for being such a good moderator, Lori. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate that. Uh, yes, we've got connections going in and out. It might help if you watch all of this in one piece later. As I said, uh, Sarth St. Michael continues to thrive because of each and every one of you, because of your time, because of your talent, because of your treasure, and because you help me share the good news, the gospel news, the message. And I think that without you, we, we, we wouldn't even bother being here. Although, there is something about exposing the dark that's not going to stop. I'll be writing about it. I'll be blogging about it. I'll be on here podcasting about it because I was just talking to God today and saying, hmm, how wonderful, how wonderful. Another angle that I hadn't considered. God, thank you very much for not letting me look at that and fall into that. And that's what we have to look at obstacles. We have to look at the obstacles and the things that trip us up and we think, oh my gosh, why did I do that? It's an opportunity. So as you are an opportunity for someone else, every bit of what you've suffered, every cross that you bore is an opportunity to help someone else. Never forget that. Never forget that. And if you can see anything in any of these videos that we post, please share them. Help someone else and say, you know what? I heard you're going through this. Maybe this video might help you. Because I know as a busy person, a lot of times I will turn on a YouTube video and I'll think, oh yeah, that's right. I was just looking that up. I just grabbed a book on that. But here, this is a PhD or this is a nun or this is a priest or this is somebody I, I can respect and I'll listen to it. So audio clips and video clips are great ways to help other people. So there's lots of videos to go through. I have lots of titles. There's um, lots of stuff from the Latin prayers to clear your house. There is um, subliminal relaxation prayers of the Auxilium Christianorum, which are prayers for priests, people like me, and they are prayers of protection. There are a variety of the common prayers of, of the Catholic Church in, in Latin and in English. Share them. 
Do you know why? I'm asking you to share them because it breaks down principalities and powers. How does it do that? Years ago, every single set of church bells was exercised. The big bells were exercised. And it cleared the air from the prince of darkness, the prince of the air. So when you share something, prayer from this channel or a video that could help someone, it's going to clear the air. And how do I know that? I'm not saying that I'm doing this. I'm not saying that you're doing this. What I'm saying is that the content of love and the gospel of love that you're sharing clears the air. It sends peace. It really does. So, all of you, each and every one of you, know that your intentions and um, the families that are suffering from the suicides that have affected them will be in my prayers, in my novenas, and in my intentions, and in my angelos. I want to thank you for joining me live tonight because this is a rare opportunity. Usually I am pre-recorded. And I want to thank you for all your suggestions. And if you have any of them, okay, you know you can drop suggestions. You can download your free copy. All right, I have a free copy, The Link of St. Bernard's 12 Steps to Humility and Pride. You can join me next Sunday, which I will not be live. I will be pre-recorded because it's going to be a long one. My next live show may not be this week, just so I can give my voice a little time to rest. Will be I do them twice a month, the live shows, and I either do... A movie review of how demons are operating in today's world or I do a show on narcissism I will be sprinkling in more live videos as time permits so never forget like what do I say the battles already been won and hopefully Swords of St. Michael is here to help you win the fight and win it right so God bless each and every one of you Thank you so much for coming tonight and hanging out with me. And I am going to pray each and every one of you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Feel the joy, his love, and his peace in your soul. And you manage to share it with every smile, every handshake, no matter what is breaking your heart, no matter what is pulling at you. My prayers will be with you. God bless each and every one of you. Good night. Yes, Jose, we will pray for you. Jose, in our chat, is suffering greatly from depression. Please pray for Jose Garcia. Yes, um, Colin just mentioned Father Chad Ripker's prayers. Delivery for laity is really an excellent purchase. I'll see if I can't put that link below too. Thank you so much, Lucy, for joining us tonight. Lori, God bless you. Thank you, my moderators, Sean and Lori. And I'm going right to the ending scene. And I'm hoping I will see you in my next live show. So make sure you hit that subscribe and don't forget turn on notifications or you won't find out when I'm on. Thank you all. God bless you. Happy New Year. Looking forward to leaving my tree up to candle mass. I hope you do too. Good night.